Hi guys, Bruce here. Well, this is a sweetheart. They have a family farm. And to this day, there's still no AC at the family farm. And he built a big shop down there, like we're talking, oh, I don't know, 3,000 square feet. So he used this generator when he spent more time down there uh, to light the shop and also to do some camping and stuff but then everybody's trailers got a little more sophisticated and they have you know they might have a solar thing at the top or you know they got a little generator of their own and he didn't use it as much but now his son's getting married and they're gonna have a party down there and this has been sitting in his shop and has not run for at least 15 years he figures it's a 1991 or a 92 is when he built his shop cool huh So let's just have a look at this beautiful thing. I can't find a, uh, an identifier date on it. If I will, I'll let you know. So obviously air intake, right, muffler. And there's the little carburetor right back in there with the tube. And it looks like it's got a shutoff like a tractor, eh? Right there, do you see that on the bottom of the carburetor? Right there. <laughs> I don't know how many cc's this is. Nice little control panel, nothing fancy. It's got the idle, auto idle. Well, Hunk Honda were the first ones to come up with that. It's a 3500 watt. I'm just going to take a slow walk around this guy. There's the output panel right there. Oh, and it does have DC control. He wasn't sure whether it did. This, it's belt drive. Can you believe it? And the belt, if you reach in behind here, watch your fingers, Bruce. It's a belt like on a car for a timing belt. So that thing's not going to be needing replaced. I will have a look at it. And I'm, we're all going to look at this thing together, right? Here's the fuse for the 115 volts. Pretty hefty engine on it. So the first thing we got to do now is uh, see what the fuel there is. I did have a little sniff and it smells like there's fuel in the tank. Oh no! But luckily the gas has been shut off. Eh? I'm all ready for you. I know it's not like me to be ready, right? I usually run around like a chicken with my head cut off. Let's have a look at the fuel, if there's enough even here to have a look at. Oh yeah. Now there won't be ethanol in this fuel, because the last time he used it, we didn't have ethanol in our gases, eh? So the first thing we're going to do... <laughs> this looks like you've been running the... Uh, Running the uh, 10K race without a drink. It's almost an oil. <laughs> so any of you Honda aficionados out there, uh, if you can pinpoint a year, I'd be thrilled. And the tank is perfect. Okay? Ooh, it's got some weight to it. This is no lawnmower. <laughs> We pulled it out of his truck and we put it straight onto my little, my little uh, lift cart here, so we wouldn't have to lift it. It took three men and a small boy to lift this thing. So we're gonna gas is turned off, so we're not gonna be doing anything too evil. Oh, okay. This all looks reusable. May take the, I might just take the foam off. Yeah, the foam is starting to burn, eh? So, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Uh, oh, we need a, we need something to indicate electricity. Put this in. We'll hang that from there. Now, let's see, what have we got? AC volts. 
we might as well turn them all on, right? Switch. We don't have to turn on the automatic idle portion. Okay. Are we ready to test this? Oh, I did check the oil. It has oil. Okay, let's go. Now, so what we're looking for now is for that trouble light right there. Right? Is that it? Yep, that trouble light to come on. Okay. Well, that's the best news I've had all day. Moving forward, let's make it run for a little while. And I want to see if it produces 220. Oops. Hey, Thomas, I just spilled some gas. But not very much. I'll just grab a meter here. AC volts, not, not, uh, not DC volts on this trip. So we're going to plug it into the 220 volt outlet, which is a twist lock. And we're going to look at the joltage from here. You guys won't be able to see it, but I will be. So now I'm going to just keep it running if I can. Got to move quick here. So we're looking for 220 volts on this meter right here. Very, very crude. But I didn't want to use gas from the tank. So that's my only option. Uh, I could set up a slave tank to the carburetor, but I think it's plugged. All right, my friends. I've got a 3 16 thick 3 16 hose connected to the gas tank. We'll just let that gently drain. Now, because it's at this end of the tank, I can I can do my lift roo here again. But I tell you, this end of the generator is not light. There we go. That should increase our flow a little bit. Oh, that feels better. Midstream sample, send it to the dock. Hey, that would raise some eyebrows, hey, when they put that under a microscope. Mr. Pender, you're not healthy. Sure isn't rushing out of there, is there? I'm going to try something. You know me. Oh, be careful, Bruce. There's screens and stuff in there. That helped a little bit. Let me do it again. Oh, I, you know what? This hose is just a bit too big. Hmm. All right, so I put about a liter and a half of gas in the tank, and it's still kind of coming out a little yellow. But I'm going to just switch it to a different container now, because that could just be the, the dregs that are in the bottom of it, eh? So let's just switch this out now, see if it's any, any different color. So I really mixed that tank back and forth. That's a, this is a heavy machine. But there could be at least a half up here. There could be, you know, half a liter of gas sitting in the sitting in this corner because I have that side jacked up right there. Seems to be draining a little better too. Perfect. I just got to keep an eye on, make sure I don't spill any. All right, that's almost the color of the gas that I have. So that. We are getting there now. So we'll just let that drain out and then we'll get to the carburetor. Wouldn't that be fun to get her running today, eh? I don't think that's... I want to go slow. I don't want to do anything wrong. This is a nice generator. All right, guys. It's kind of like the, the... the good, bad, and the ugly or something. So here's the good. Here's the bad. Oop. And here's the ugly. 
So that's before tank rinse one, that's after tank rinse one, and that's after tank rinse number two. This is the winner right here. Cool, huh? Okay, the secret sauce is ready to go. It says it's at 61 degrees there. And we'll use the gun here. And I'll shoot her into there. 62, 59. So it's in the zone. Pretty cool, eh? Oops. Your mission, Bruce, should you decide to accept it, is to get this carburetor off of here. We need some tools. 10 mil. One. Ooh, kind of loose. It makes sense though. This is an old machine, right? Here it is. Feels like it's got one more hole in it. Oh, no, there we go. So do I pull this out this way? I think so. I'm going to stay away from stay away from the engine if I can. All right. Good. Oh yeah. We gotta disconnect the fuel line. It's got those little baby clamps, eh? Not a fan of these. I don't think they do much. Hang on, baby. Oh, we might need fuel line pliers for that. Just to break it loose, eh? Bugger. I, know, I got a, an old cableman knife somewhere. There we go. I'm going to just come up right on the side of that. Wow. It's on there pretty good. I might have to cut it off after. I may have to cut it off now. That works. It's got some slack in it and I've got some more of this stuff. Okay, side cutters. It's grown on, eh? Look at that. It's age. It's all that is. Which I can relate to, right? Okay, now I gotta get this uh, drain tube off of here. Or, yeah, I think so. What the heck, eh? Good. Now this should pull off of here. This Tigon, see which is better. Oh, that's way better. But it hasn't got as many ridges. Now we've got two more things to take off here. I don't think we should have to stretch it that hard. Funny, just a simple operation can slow you right down. Eh? There we go. I just pushed the uh, arm from the governor. There we go. Well, I'm going to get a Phillips screwdriver to get that bowl off of there, I guess. And then we'll have a look underneath it. So now I'm just taking the bowl off this carburetor. At the same time, oh yes, and these are Japanese industrial standard screws. They have a dot on the screw and it's a special screwdriver. These screwdrivers work great on Japanese stuff and they work good on SAE, but the SAE Phillips screwdrivers don't work that well on the Japanese because it's the depth of the depth of the cross. So if we look really close on here, at the bottom, right by my fingernail, there's a little, I wonder if I can focus on that. That's about it. There's a little dot right there, and that tells you that it's a JIS.
there it is. Okay. Now we can take this over to the bench. To the bench, Bruce. We're going to see here, we can see here, we can see here, we can see here, in the middle of there. Okay, so now we need what looks like to me a 12 or a 13 millimeter socket. Almost could be a 14. Yep, 14. 1 4 mm. Okay, let's get a nice little ratchet. My favorite ratchet, it's an old Sears teardrop. Now let's get this carburetor apart. Let's see what kind of schmoo is in here. Schmoo. That's a word. I don't think you can look it up. I think it's spelled S-C-H-M-O-O. -O. Oh. Well, we're grown over. On a brass hammer. Now let's just have a close look here. We should be good. There we go. Oh boy. That's what you call pretty ugly. Standard carburation. Very, very little movement. Uh, no movement on. Oh, there we go. I don't want to break anything, right? I'm sure I can buy one of these carburetors, but it isn't going to be cheap. My rubber broke. Now these gloves don't last very long with carb spray, but I really hope to not use too much of it. Because I got the ultrasonic cleaner over there, right? So we're going to get the, get the, uh, most of the stuff, the schmoo cleaned up. Okay, here we go. Oh, there's a suspender. My roommate. Well, that's good. Pins going back and forth. A little. Okay. I got just a machine for that. Judy, where are my punches? Pin. I have a little, gives me a little more room to maneuver. Good. Okay. Okay, now we're going to punch that pin right through. But I need an arm coming out of my head. Right on, baby. I'm going to have to reach right through there and get her out. The needle is movable. Yikes. Now just a good screwdriver. It is coming. Hey, 
Here, let's get some uh, carburetor juice into the in into the inlet, and that'll get the uh, tip of the needle wet. The carburetor spray. Let that just sit for a minute. I don't know if it's coming or if it's just the spread on it. Okay, let's get this cut off. This is the fuel line. The fuel line from hell. There. Look at that ugly thing. It's going to work. So in the process of waiting for that carb spray to work on the tip of the needle, which I know has a rubber tip, so I have to be careful. Now, let's see if we can get that out of there. We want this operation to be a success. <laughs> we'll work on the other ones later. Yes, right now I want to get this uh, float and needle out of there. It's coming. Something gave. It's not coming. The wires are stretching. Let's get this out of here. Oh, man. Okay, needle nose plant on the tip of the needle. Not happy. There. Oh, hey, here we go. This is going to help. Uh, get the C clip off of here. There it is. Okay. I don't know what happened to the clip. I'm headed downhill like a snowball headed for hell here. Okay. I'm missing two things now. I'm missing the clip and the uh, wire on the end of the needle. This is not going well. There it is. Pretty little. <laughs> Found it. So our last mission before we clean this carburetor is to get this needle out of this seat. It looks like it's moved up a little bit. Yeah, hey, hey, baby. Oh, she's ugly. Okay, so now we need some squirting juice through the inlet to see if we have flow to the needle hole. Okay, so they're from here 
Are you guys with me? Are you at all? Yeah. From here, out the top, we should have, we should have flow. Good. Now we're going to spray this. Well, it's coming. And a little bit of love. Right on that old blister I got on my finger. It's funny, that's the one that comes through, eh? Good. We're going to see if we can get that uh, motion tube out of there now. That's the next mission. And you need a, it's a big carburetor. So you need a, you need a, a screwdriver with no shank. Or this one has no shank. <laughs> a flat blade edged screwdriver. I think it's gonna come. Hurry! It's going to be as ugly as a mud fence. Yeah, I know I can get it. I just got to get it out. I'll be right back. I've got an issue. Okay. I got smart. Went and got some. Just a minute. All right, let's get that out of there. I got these baby tweezers. It's coming. Yay! Now we got to get the emulsion tube out of there. That's just the jet. But now we can spray in there. I've done this two different ways. I've driven a drywall screw into the end and pulled that out. Might have to do that. We need some really good light in there. Ah, Papa son. Now let's just turn the angle of the dangle to the vise. Pick it up in your corner of your vision. Hopefully we got this. You ready? <laughs> okay, back to here. Over to here. Three stooges. I'm taking you some of you guys back in time, eh? Good. Okay, that is a disassembled carburetor. She didn't want to come, eh? Oh, the bowl. <laughs> There's the bowl, guys. This was a dirty carburetor. That's just varnishized gas, eh? Arr, need a new tube. This tube isn't sticking in here. I'm gonna bang it. it. Might help. It might help it stick a little bit. Good. Alright, I'm going to turn you off, get set up for the washer, and we'll be right back.